it is new case day. Oh. So this is the new H9 Flow from NZXT. They have two different variants, both come in white and black. You can get a Flow, which as in the name, Airflow, and you can also get an Elite version, which is more of a showcase. They also have their new C1200 Gold power supply, which is an ATX3 compliant. A lot of people were asking for those and they now have that. And also, they're duo fans. These come in 120 and 100 mil options. Black and white, again, you can get dual and triple packs. Triple for the 120s, dual for the 140s. Comes with the hub and everything as well to get started. And all of this is available now. So I've already done an overview of the C1200, so that will be live tomorrow if you're watching this video on the day of release. But today we're gonna to be looking at the H9 Flow, give you a little overview, show you what it can do, and uh, tell you about some upcoming plans that I've got with it. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut in here because it is important to talk about packaging. Very well packaged, nice um, polystyrene, very thick, and uh, while protecting the multiple glass sides, there goes the manual. Here we have it. Well, I like it already. I'm even looking at the back side. I like it already. Let me just touch this, just to see if we can... Oh, okay. I usually get an electric shock when I touch cases that have just come out of the bag, so I'm quite glad that I didn't get one this time. So the first thing you're gonna see is the glass that's on the front and the side. So it gives you uninterrupted view of your PC. The tempered glass is tinted on the black editions of the Flow and the Elite, and then the white editions of clear glass. They're already making me think about some white LED strips though with the uh, black and tint on the glass. Now let's go to the top. This is our other big change. So on the flow, you have got this perforated mesh panel and then the Elite will give you the glass. We can just pop this off very simply from the back. And then that is a filtered mesh as well on the inside. Now you've got support for a 360 mil radiator on here. Also on the side, you can do a 360. And on the bottom, you can do a 360. So three 360 mil radiators on this case. So water cooling potential is very high with this case. We have got a little bracket as well and do the thumb screws that then slides a little bit and then comes out. So that makes putting your AIO additional fans or your radiators really easy into your case. Uh, we've also got some IO up here. We've got a power button, which is actually incorporated into the top of the case that has got some RGB around it. I'm gonna guess that's a hard drive activity light. And then we've also got two USB 3 ports, USB type C, and also a headphone and microphone combi jack. Underneath, we've got some pads for the surface it's gonna be on and also some nice depth as well. So if you've got any intake fans on the bottom of the case, you're gonna get some nice fresh air. There's also a dust filter on the bottom as well for any fans that you do add. That just slots in nice and easily. And then you can do 360 mil of radiator fans. You can do two 140s under there as well if you want. So on the back, we've got a 120 mil exhaust fan. That is a silent edition fan. And then we've got our power supply mount, standard seven bay of expansion. I'll cover the fans and things in a minute as well when we get inside. Single, single thumb screw for the glass side panel and then it's on those little poppers and that allows us to take it off to so lift it up at an angle and it comes away. That would be easier to do when the case is upright, but for the sake of the camera, I'm doing it with it flat. So inside the case, we have got up to ATX support from motherboards. There isn't any EATX support, so that is something to factor in depending on what motherboards you might be looking to pair this with. Of course, micro ATX and ITX support is by standard. Also a little nub on there as well, so you know when you've got your motherboard in line. We've got some cable management, nice cutaway as well, that goes the whole length of the motherboard and all your cables can route through there, tuck away nicely. Now I'll just grab the NZXT. This is actually the B650E that I've just done a video on. I can see that being a little bit of a problem because you have got a very thick cable for a 24 pin and that degree of bend to then tuck it under that channel is gonna be a little bit tricky. So time will tell though, we will be doing a build with this in the future. So we shall see any problems like that when they, uh, pop up. A couple of channels at the bottom of the case for cables coming up to the bottom of the motherboard. We've also got a bigger one at the top and there's nothing behind that as well. So you will want to get those cables nice and tight so you don't have any you know, excess showing through the slot. So we've got three 120 mil F-series airflow quiet fans on this case on the Flow. If you buy the Elite, then you will get the duo fans that I mentioned before in 120 mil versions. There'll be three on the right hand side. Then both editions have a quiet fan on the back side. Both cases can take up to 10 120 millimeter fans. So three in the top, three on the right hand side, three on the bottom, and then one rear exhaust. So for the flow, that will be an additional six F120 quiet editions. So if you want to get the H9 Elite out, then you'll need a total of six additional fans and they are as follows. I'm going to read from the sheet because it's quite a lot. Three pack of F120 RGB duos, a dual pack of F140 RGB duos, 
and one F120 RGB. So going off the information I've got, that's about 200 pounds worth of fans at least uh, to fully deck out an H9 Elite. So not a cheap thing to do. I did have one idea though. This uh, could be a commission thing as well, if you enter this, you do take this idea, is to make a additional H9 add-on fan pack. So you sell either six of the F120s or the assortment of the duo fans to kit out the cases, sell it as one SKU, makes life a lot easier and far less confusing than trying to work out what you need. So while we're in the main body of the case, let's talk about our mounting options for graphics cards. You've got a total of 435 mil clearance. So I don't think there's any card that's that long at the moment. So you're pretty much safe with anything you want to go for. 4090 Strix, I think is probably the biggest card and even that will fit in here without any problems. You've not got any mounting or anything for the front panel as it's a single piece of glass. So that does give you a lot more clearance for your cards. So if a tower heatsink is your method of cooling for your build, you have got a total of 165 mil clearance, which using this, which is the Noctua NH-U12A. So you can see that just fits nicely in there. I don't know if I'd want to go any bigger, but of course all the specs for coolers and things are online. So you can check before you buy. So to the back of the case, same deal. We've got the little pop bits to uh, come off. And we have got a big old perforated section of case with a giant filter on the back. Very nice. And then we've got some more options. So here we have some removable thumb screws, another one on the bottom, then that will come out. So you can add all your additional fans, radiator, IO, whatever you fancy onto that and put it in with one single thing, just like on the top. Also, as that's nice and deep, you'll be able to put a nice chunky radiator in there as well if you're going with water cooling. So here you can see some mounting points for SSD, so that's four. We've also got an additional caddy on the right-hand side that will give us some more. Let's take off this little screw here and at the bottom. That will then allow us to open this magnetic panel and then you can access all of your main cable management. So loads of cable tie down points. So there's three on the top, four on the left hand side. So then below is where you're going to route the cables through to the motherboard. We have got an additional storage slot on the right hand side here. Oh, very dangerous to get out. You can do some additional SSDs on there as well or mount your traditional hard drives. So it's a total of four plus two, so six SSDs or two 3.5 mm hard drives. Taking that away, you can see it gives you a lot more space for cables. So should you want to put any commanders in here, you know, control boxes, hubs and things like that, that's probably the best place for you to put them. You could actually use the, where that bracket was on the side there as well. Maybe 3M tape it to the back or even just put some Velcro cable ties around it. Just an idea. Here's our little accessory box. So we've got all the different screws and things in the bag. Would be nice if these are in a little box, I think, especially for the price of the case, um, much like Fantex does. And it also would save on all the plastic as well. In the little bag here, we've got all of our front panel stuff, the three pin for the fans. And then the main section at the top here is going to be for our power supply. This can take up to a 200 mil power supply, so a pretty long one. You can also remove this cable management channel as well if the power supply does go a little bit longer. Also some vertical cable ties on the left hand side as well. I think this is going to be especially important for the 24 pin because you have got such a small run from where the power supply will be to where the connector needs to be on the motherboard. So I think using this side here might be a good way to wrap down and then back up to avoid that excess. I also think you could use this panel on the right hand side as well for any looser cables. Obviously you have got a bit of movement in it so you will need to think about that as it closes down. But you could definitely put Velcro cable straps uh, either side of this little bracket here and then root cables between, keep those down. Just another little option you've got there. That's also a lot easier to put in after the first time I took it out. So I think it's just where it's been sat for a while that it was a little bit stiff. So there we go, guys. That was a look at the H9 Flow from NZXT. This is available today and will cost you 159 euros, dollars, pounds. It's all in much, pretty much the same with taxes and things. The Elite Edition will cost you 239, but you do have to factor in, you do get the additional duo fans that you can also get now as well, along with the C1200 power supply. So let me know what you think about this in the comments box below. I'm really looking forward to doing a build. I think we're going to have to go all matte black. I think it's just the only really route you can take. I think it would just really fit the theme of uh, the case as it is. Maybe some RGB strips set to white just to make everything inside pop, uh, especially with the tint that's on the glass as well. So I'm looking forward to doing that. So stay tuned, get subscribed and do the race so you don't miss it. I'll put all the product links for everything that is launched today in the description box below as well if you want to pick anything up. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to NZXT for sending this out for me to look at and I'll see you all in the next one.